हेलो नमस्कार खम्बा गनी पीपल वेलकम बैक टू आर चैनल प्रोफेसर तिवारी एंड माय नेम इज अमृता सो टुडे वी गोना कंटिन्यू विद द सेम लेसन दैट इज सेल द यूनिट ऑफ लाइफ फ्रॉम क्लास 11 एंड वी विल प्रोसीड विद द अदर सेल ऑर्गेनली दैट इज द क्लोरोप्लास्ट और द प्लास्टिड्स द मेन टॉपिक इज एक्चुअली प्लास्टिड्स सो लेट्स कंटिन्यू विद द टॉपिक प्लास्टिड्स ओके नाउ You can just see a diagram over here. We'll discuss this diagram later on in the section of the plastids. But first, we need to understand what plastids are. If you talk about plastids, then plastids are actually been they are being present. Now, where are they being present first? That you will find plastid in plants and in euglenoids. Okay, you will find the plastids in plants or in euglenoids. Other than that, can you see them? Like, are they easily visible? Yes, they are visible under. microscope they are easily visible under microscope okay fine now if we just talk about the plastids then on the plastids are actually the one which gives the color or which stores the nutrients so on the basis of color the amount of the pigment that they have or the uh, pigment means what color they provide to the plant or to the euglenoids on the basis of that on the basis of pigment when i say color which means the pigment the plastids are been divided into three types so if we divide the plastids plastids divide into three types on the basis of on the basis of pigment okay when i divide when i divide plastids on the basis of pigment it divides into three types a i would say leucoplast b chromoplast and c chloroplasts okay we'll discuss each of them one by one so first we need to understand that we are dividing the plastids or plastids get divided into three types based on the pigments that they have the leucoplast the chromoplast and the chloroplast now let's see move forward and we'll understand one by all of these three uh, plastids leucoplast chromoplast and chloroplast based on what pigment or what color they provide to the plant okay so let's move ahead into them If you look at the plastids, the first one that we're going to discuss over here would be the leucoplast. Okay, now let's see about the leucoplast. The first one, leucoplasts. Okay, when I say leucoplast, so leucoplasts are actually they are either white or colorless pigments, which means they don't provide any color to the plant. Okay, but they are varied in number and shapes they are varied in num number and shapes based on that other than that they also store different type of nutrients so you will find different type of nutrients store store different types of nutrients okay see because plants also require nutrients for their growth so or they produce different different type of nutrients okay uh, through the different different processes plant processes so they need to be get stored somewhere in the plant so that they can be used further in any of the processes that plant has to perform all right so on that basis if we if i just divide the leucoplast on the basis of nutrients that they uh, pre, uh, that they store so i'm going to divide leucoplasts divides into again three types on the basis of nutrients okay what type of nutrients do they gonna store on the basis of that the leucoplast gets divided again into three types so we'll see a that is amyloplasts When I say amyloplasts, then amyloplasts actually stores carbohydrate, or I would say starch. Okay, it stores carbohydrate, or you can say starch. And if I just give you example for it, potato. 
very uh, for example is a potato that amyloplast actually stores carbohydrate which is a leucoplast only it is a colorless compound and it stores the carbohydrate on the other hand the other word is elioplast elioplasts now what does this elioplast store elioplast actually stores fat it stores fats and oils okay it store these two things and the last one that is the last one amyl aureloplast aureloplasts what does it store it stores proteins okay so we have seen that plastids gets divided into three types that is the leucoplast the chromoplast and the chloroplast on the basis of the color pigment that they have on first we'll see the leucoplast so we have seen in the leucoplast that leucoplast is actually gives the white color or the colorless pigment which means it will not provide any color or will com provide completely provide white color to the plant or to any other uh, a plant or eugluenoid in which it is it has been present but uh, leucoplast can be varied in number as well as in shape and it is also varies in the type of uh, nutrients it stores so on the basis of that uh, we just divide the leucoplast into three types on the basis of nutrients that they store amyloplast elioplast and aureloplast so if you just see the amyloplast so amyloplast is actually stores the carbohydrate which is a starch an example is the potato on the other hand elioplast stores fats and oils and aureloplast stores the proteins so this is about the leucoplast now we'll move ahead with the second one with the second plastid that is the chromoplast okay what does the chromoplast store or what the chromoplast actually does so chromoplast which is the second plastid over here that we're going to discuss chromoplasts okay so chromoplast is actually have they have what they have they have fat soluble they have fat soluble carotenoids okay they have fat soluble carotenoids that are present into them other and what what else do they have other than carotenoids they have fat soluble carotenoids and yeah so they have the fat soluble carotenoids other than that what color do they provide they provide blue yellow red and other other colors to the plant okay now moving ahead into this one what does the chromoplast actually does chromoplast is also uh, contains the uh, it also contains the it also stores proteins into them okay so chromoplast it uh, it is a fat soluble it, it it has a fat soluble carotenoid which has been present into them okay and these car these carotenoids are being called as carotenin and xanthophyll and some other uh, carotenoids okay so chromoplast actually gives the uh, actually have this uh, it is a fat soluble carotenoid and the different carotenoids are carotene and xanthophyll and some other carotenoids are being present what color does it give it gives blue yellow red or some other color to the plant okay it shows protein now the other one that is the chloroplast now we'll move to the chloroplast which which we like here from class 8th approximately that the chloroplast is actually responsible for the green color and also uh, plays a very major role in the photosynthesis process okay so let's move ahead with the chloroplast okay chloroplast now this chloroplast actually have two things present into them it has the first thing it is it contains 
chlorophyll as the pigment chlorophyll pigment it contains okay this chlorophyll pigment actually gives green color to plants okay so chlorophyll is basically responsible for the green color to the plants other than that this chlorophyll is also also responsible for what it does it traps sunlight sunlight as energy which is used in photosynthesis we all know this thing which means that chloroplast what does the chloroplast do it contains a pigment which is being called as chlorophyll and this chlorophyll gives the green color to the plants chlorophyll plays a very major role over here that is that it traps the sunlight which is a source of energy and which is being used in the photosynthesis process for the convert for the making for the conversion for the making up of uh, glucose and oxygen which is a uh, oxygen is a secondary product or by product now moving i had now will discuss the chlor chlorophyll up in in a bit detail over here as you can see a diagram over here is present over here too which is of a chloroplast only but we'll discuss like from where does the chloroplast is been present in the most of the amount so we'll find the chloroplast basically in the uh, mesophylls mesophyll cells of plant leaves okay in majority i would say uh it is not like that chloroplast is or mesis mesophyll cell is present only in the plant leaf it is present in some other part of the plant too but in the majority in higher number you will find it in the plant leaves okay other than that if we'll just see if we'll just look at the shape of the uh, mesophyll cells then you will see that they have the lens shape they have the oval shape they have the discoid shape they have even shape and they have ribbon like shape okay so these are the different different shapes that the chloroplast that the mesophyll cells have okay other than that if you just look at the size of it then they have the length of 5 to 10 mm and width of 2 to 4 mm which is which means it is very small in size okay and this mesophyll cells contains the chlorophyll which contains the chlorophyll which is responsible for the green color of the plant so actually the mesophyll cells are present in the plant leaves they have the chlorophyll okay or they have the chloroplast and then they have the chlorophyll present into them which provides the green color majorly present in the plant leaves they have different shapes that we have just discussed now moving ahead over here is that we have more things to discuss that what does a uh, the chloroplast other things that have if you just look at the structure of the chloroplast you can see that the chloroplast is actually shares quite a similar characteristics with the uh, mitochondria also like just the mitochondria it is also a doubled layer structure which is double membranous structure if you just look at over here in the diagram this is the outer membrane the black with the black one and the blue one is the which shows the inner membrane okay so what similarities does the chloroplast shares with the mitochondria that is that it is a double membrane structure double membrane structure it is a double membrane structure if you just look at the inner membrane then inner membrane is actually approximately you can say it is semi permeable semi permeable i would say that it allows certain things to go uh, come uh, out and certain things to uh, to come in so i would say it is semi permeable it is semi permeable in nature okay what else does it have uh, that is shares common with the mitochondria is that it contains it contains some double i would just write in the abbreviated form double stranded dna which is a circular in nature okay double stranded circular dna it contains what else it contains it contains the ribosomes okay but the size of the ribosomes that chloroplast has it's actually 70s just like the mitochondria mitochondria also has 70s ribosome 
where as if you just look at the ribosome of the cytoplasm if you just look at the structure of cytoplasm uh, size of cytoplasm uh, ribosome cytoplasm it is ats what is s s is actually if i just talk about this s over here then this s is actually severberg unit okay which is a severberg unit which has been called as and what it does it actually does it is the measure of the uh, how fast or at what uh, number or at what speed okay the ribosome gets settled down during the centrifugation process so it is it shows that okay it so which means that the chloroplast is all shares a few similar properties with the mitochondria is that it is a double membrane layer structure inner membranes is almost semi permeable in nature which means it allows certain things to go in and out uh, it contains similarly some double stranded circular dna structure it has it has ribosomes of its own just like the mitochondria it also has 70s ribosome which is actually smaller than in comparison to the ribosome of the cytoplasm which actually has a 80s ribosome which is a big bigger one okay now moving ahead into this one we'll just move inside the chloroplast and we will see like what things does this uh, chloroplast have if you just see these red dots that i have made in the one which means it is actually the inner material or you can say the inner liquid uh, filled into the inner membrane inside the inner membrane of the chloroplast okay so this inner membrane so if you just look at the inner membrane so inner membrane actually contains if i would say inner membrane what does the inner membrane contains inner membrane has stroma okay why this stroma i have written stroma over here which is filled over here i have shown it try to represent with the dots okay so that you can understand clearly this stroma is actually kind of a liquid which is being filled into the chloroplast what does the it why the stroma is so important stroma is so important reason behind is that it contains several i would say several special enzymes it contains several special enzymes which are important for the synthesis of synthesis of proteins and carbs okay which is important for us which means stroma is important because it contains several enzymes which are required for the synthesis of proteins and carbohydrates by the chloroplast okay one more similarity that chloroplast shares with the uh, mitochondria is that because it contains its own ribosome which means it can produce as we can say it can, can produce its own proteins which means it can divide by its own but both of them actually can't exist independently when i say independently i mean that they can't exist outside the cell they might survive for a period of time but eventually they will die because most of the raw materials that they require for their survival uh, is they actually get it from the cytoplasm and some the other nutrient materials that they require for their survival they get it from the cytoplasm even certain enzymes they require so all these things are being provided by the cytoplasm which is being present so they can survive for a period of time but eventually they will going to die out okay so this is a one more similarity that exists between the chloroplast and the mitochondria now moving ahead over here is that other than that you can see that i have tried to make certain these uh, these structures these ones okay so these structures if i just tell you these structures are been actually been called as thylakoids what these thylakoids are they are actually membrane uh they are actually flat membrane structures they are fl a flat membrane structures okay and they be are being called as thylakoid they are being called as thylakoid now talking about the thylakoids why these thylakoids are so important if you just look at the thylakoid when i say thylakoid which means i just try to draw this this one over here i'm drawing this one over here so that you can understand i have drawn this diagram like this this single one is being called as thylakoid this single one this single one is being called as thylakoid 
okay this single one is being called as thylakoid so they are the flat membranous structure and when these thylakoids when they arrange when they arrange in coin shape like a uh, like a coin stack they arrange themselves okay so when they arrange themselves in a stack of coin like 4 or 5 or 6 or 10 or 20 might be they actually become your grana you can call them grana or you can also call them integral integral grana integral grana thylakoid integral thylakoid thylakoid okay all of these all of them they are together being called as grana g r a n a but when i talk about this single one which means this one it is it will be called as granum i have written over here granum this single stack of thylakoids okay which means they might contain 5 20 or 30 uh, thylakoid that doesn't ma uh, matter how many they contain a single stack of thylakoid okay like i have drawn like four suppose this one is grana okay this one is granum this single one is being called as granum but all together they are being called as grana okay fine all right other than that you will see one more thing over here which is been over here is these these structures these ones these connecting channels which are been present over here between the each grana these connecting channels these connecting channels connecting tubes i would say these connecting tubes are being called as your stroma lamella okay they are being called as stroma lamella they are connecting tubes between between the two granas okay other than that these thylakoids actually have the space inner space uh, present in them and the inner space of thylo thylakoid of each thylakoid is been called as your lumen okay one last point over here is that thylakoid contains your chlorophyll okay so chlorophyll i would say where they have been present they are present in thylakoid okay so this they are present in your thylakoid uh yes we have covered all the things over here i have explained you the diagram very well okay this connecting channel is been called stroma lamella this one is grana the single one is been called as grana the whole stack of these chloroplasts they are present they are been called as uh, your uh, they are been called as gra grana and the single one is been called as granum if you just look at the number of these uh, i would say the mesophyll cells if we just talk about then mesophyll cells can be varied in number they like they can present only in one okay like they can be only single one which which can you find in the chlamydomonas which is kind of an algae has been there other than that blue green, green algae can have large number of mesophyll cells like from approximately up to 40 they can have okay so the number of mesophyll cells ranges between 1 to 40 in different different uh, organisms that we have or might be the plant species like can be algae or something else okay so this is all for the plastids that we have studied today and if you have any doubts please drop them in the comment box below don't forget to like share and subscribe our channel and all, please also hit the bell icon for more such updates in the coming uh, weeks okay thank you bye